Okay, in this example, we're going to determine whether or not the set of all vectors in R2 of the form xx, so the components are going to be the same, and we're going to use the usual definition of vector addition and scalar multiplication. Does that make a vector space? And the short answer is yes, it does. But let's go through everything. So I'm going to let uh, my vector u, that's going to be the vector with the same components xx, and we'll let vector v have components yy. Again, those are both in R2, and they have the same, the same components. So the first thing we want to show is u plus v, would that be um, in our vector space? Well, u plus v, that's going to be the vector xx plus the vector yy. That's going to be x plus y, x plus y. So certainly that would be in the vector space because, again, the components are the same. So it definitely is closed under addition. The next property is also easy. Does u plus v equal v plus u? Well, we just saw that u plus v gives us x plus y, x plus y. Well, we can always reverse that and make it y plus x y plus x, and well, that's the same thing as vector v plus vector u, and again, that's in the vector space, so uh, no problems there. Associativity, I'm going to skip associativity. It's going to be the exact same thing. Well, no, come on, let's do it. So let's let uh, vector w be a vector with components z and z. So let's see, we want to show that u plus v, if we do that first and then add w, is that the same thing as if we do u and then add v and w? Well, u plus v, we said that's going to be x plus y plus w, that would be, now we have to add this extra vector. Well, that's going to give us x plus y plus z, x plus y plus z. I think it's easy to see that you get the same thing on the other side. So if we do vector v plus w, we would have y plus z, y plus z. And if we add those together, we'll have x plus y plus z, and we'll have x plus y plus z. So yeah, we get the same thing. So it's definitely associative. Does there exist a zero vector? Well, yeah, the zero vector, so certainly zero, zero, that's uh, in our set of, of vectors that were under discussion. And if we do, so the question is, does u plus zero, does that equal u? So this will be property number four. Yeah, because then we have xx plus 0, 0. And again, if we add those component-wise, we'll get x plus 0, x plus 0, which is just xx, which is going to be our original vector that we started with. So, okay, so for every vector in our space, is there uh, an element denoted negative of that in v so that when we add them together, we get the 0 vector? Sure, you know, if uh, xx is in there, notice negative x, negative x, that's also of the form that we want. And if we take xx plus negative x, negative x, we'll just add those component wise and get the zero vector. So no problem there either. Um, there's definitely the negative of every element. Let's see, if we take c and multiply it by u, is that in v? Well, definitely. So property number seven. So if we take c and multiply it by u, well, that's going to be c multiplied by the vector with components xx. Uh, we just multiply each component by c. And again, when we do that uh, scalar multiplication, we do, in fact, get a vector that has the same components. So no problem there. Um, let's see, that's actually property number six. 
Property 7, we have to show that C multiplied by the quantity U plus V. Does that equal C multiplied by U plus C multiplied by V? Well, let's see. We've already seen that U plus V would be X plus Y, X plus Y. So if we distribute, we would have C multiplied by X plus Y, C multiplied by X plus Y. Well, if we distribute, we'll have CX plus CY, CX plus CY. And again, we can now break this apart. That's going to be CX, CX plus CY, CY. We can factor it back out. That's going to be C multiplied by XX plus C multiplied by YY. And that's going to be C multiplied by um, our vector U plus C multiplied by our vector V. So, all right, sorry if I'm going through this a little quickly. It's kind of tedious um, problem and hopefully one that's not too terribly difficult. Um, so let's see, C plus D multiplied by U. Does that equal C multiplied by U plus D multiplied by U? Well, let's see, C plus D multiplied by U That'll be x times x, or excuse me, xx. So if we distribute, we would have c plus d multiplied by x. I should say now if we distribute. So that's going to give us cx plus dx, cx plus dx. And again, we can just break this apart into two separate vectors. This is going to be cx, cx plus dx, dx. And we can certainly factor the c out. So that'll be c multiplied by xx plus d multiplied by xx. And that gives us c multiplied by u plus c multiplied by v. So again, maybe not the most thrilling example in the world. Number nine. Okay, so if we multiply d by u, does that equal c times d times u? Okay, so c multiplied by, so let's do d times u. Well, d multiplied by u, that would be dx, dx. But now if we multiply this by c, that's going to give us c multiplied by dx, c multiplied by dx. Well, certainly we can factor the CD out front and still be left with X, X, and that's going to be C times D multiplied by our vector that we're calling U. Um, last but not least, if we multiply by 1, well, 1 multiplied by the vector with components X, X, that's just going to be 1 times X, 1 times X which is just going to give us x times x, which is going to give us our vector u. So, okay, it looks like the first one satisfies all those requirements. Definitely not too tricky of a problem. Um, two, the other two examples might be a little more interesting, so let's take a look at those next.